Watch this video and learn three useful tips if you want to learn how to advance your English vocabulary. If you don't know me very well, hello, I'm Teacher Bricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I post different kinds of English lessons to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. So consider subscribing. But if you have already done so, I appreciate it, you know, hit the like button. But let's talk about the tips that will help you advance your English vocabulary if you follow them consistently. That's key. And guys, here on my channel, I help students at a pre-intermediate and intermediate level. Basically, my job is to help students go from stuck to speaking in six months. And at this level, it is possible. And I imagine that if you're watching this video, it means you want to learn more vocabulary, but in an efficient way, you know, in an efficient way, more uh, in a way that you remember, okay, quality, I imagine that are advanced words you want to know. And more importantly, you want to feel more comfortable in conversations. And to make that happen, of course, you need to speak more. Yes, I agree with you. But if your vocabulary is too basic, that is not going to happen. You're not going to feel comfortable. And consequently, you will not feel confident participating in different conversations, whether at work or when traveling making small talk, okay? So at this level, students get lost and end up exaggerating on the number of words and forget about the quality of the words they study and how to study them. This is very typical. This generally happens at this level. Students get really stressed about uh, quantity. You know, I need to learn more phrasal verbs, more idioms, more expressions. I got to know them. I got to know them. So they exaggerate. They pile up words but they have no meaning. So it's very important to pay attention to the quality of the words you study and the way you study them, how consistent you are with your practice. And these are things we're going to talk about here in this lesson. It's something that I do with my students in my academy. Of course, I bring them the most advanced vocabulary, you know, in every lesson that are new words and modules, extra activities, workshops. I am always bringing them new words, okay? And when I say that students exaggerate on the quantity, of course, you will learn a lot of words, okay? But we need to balance that number so that you don't get too stressed overwhelmed, you know, and feel burned out. I think that's something we need to pay attention to. And with my students, I call my students BSA. With my BSA, they always work on vocabulary. And one thing that I help them change is the way they study. So they have clear instructions. And I'm going to share some tips with you guys, okay? So the first one, build up from what you already know. And here, guys, as you can see on the screen, synonyms and antonyms, okay, opposites. This is the number one strategy you're going to follow starting now at a pre-intermediate level because I imagine that at a pre-intermediate or intermediate level, you have a range of vocabulary, you know words, okay? So this would be a little bit more complicated with a beginner because they're still learning the basics. They are at the beginning, but not you. You're no longer a beginner. So at this point, it is important to build up, okay, to level up based on what you already have. And the best way to do that is by studying synonyms and opposites, antonyms, okay? And I'm going to be explaining. So basically that means to brush up on. Brush up is a phrasal verb. See, I'm already doing that. Brush up on what you already know. Improve, that's what it means. Improve what you already know. And that means you're going to take the time to explore synonyms and antonyms of simple words. So there's nothing wrong with improve. Absolutely. It's amazing. No worries. But how about using another one? How I used advance, how to advance your English vocabulary. My idea here, I know they're not complete synonyms, but, but my idea here is to improve, to get better, to know more. So instead of saying, well, how to improve, well, how to brush up on what you already know, how to brush up your vocabulary, on your vocabulary, excuse me. That's the goal with this tip number one. So you already have information. You already have vocabulary. Let's build up from that. 
That's much better than simply going on the internet. List of advanced expressions. List of advanced verbs. No. Use the ones you already have that will help you memorize more easily. And guys, they may not, the new words you learn, the synonyms, the antonyms, they may not always be advanced. Because oftentimes the students at this level, they think, no, I got to know the most advanced vocabulary that is, you know, I, I got to master that. And when you study synonyms and antonyms, you will not necessarily learn the most advanced words. That's not the point. The point is to add, uh, to add new words to your repertoire. Okay. I think that's the idea because this will help you understand different conversations. At the end of the day, that's what this practice is going to do for you. You want to feel more confident. You want to feel more comfortable. We need to improve your repertoire. Okay. Of words, you know, maybe you did an Obra shop on which may have other meanings, by the way, but now you do. So we're picking from something you know, and we are leveling up that word you know. And that's much better than simply going like crazy after the most advanced word. That's not how it works. When you do this, you prepare yourself for a variety of conversations. And that's what I want for you at the end of the day with this lesson, okay? Next tip, and, and here I have an example, uh, an additional example. So how do you do this? You know, when we get down to business, how do you implement this, uh, this tip? Okay. You will need to pick a few words. For example, I picked improve, but every week when you sit down to study vocabulary, take the time to think, okay, how can I advance this? I'm going to pick this word. I'm going to pick like, I use very, very much. I use tired very much. Nothing wrong with these words. I'm not here to, to be the vocabulary police, you know, like, no, you cannot use. No, no, <laughs> chill. <laughs> He's a like button. No, that's not my, my goal here. Okay. I aim at helping you expand. That's my goal. So here to grow tired of something. So I know this expression to get tired, to become less enthusiastic about something, less interested in something. That's what grow tired of means. Maybe that's already advanced for you. Maybe that's already new for you. Maybe you just know the word tired. Oh, I'm, I'm tired of this, uh, of this lifestyle. Okay. I'm getting tired. Maybe, you know, get tired of, okay. Teacher, I only know get tired of, I'm getting tired of living in the countryside. Okay. This is an example. That one means to grow tired of something, becoming less enthusiastic and less interested in something because you've been doing it for a long time. You've been exposed to it for a long time. So you're tired. Okay. You're getting less excited, less enthusiastic about it. Now let's enhance, let's build up. Instead of saying, getting tired, growing tired of something, I can say, grow wary of something. Weary means tired. Okay. Oh, but Priscilla, what if it has a different meaning? It may have. That's the beauty of vocabulary. You expand slowly. Don't focus on learning all the possible meanings of wary. All the possible situations. You go crazy if you try to do that. But this example I'm showing you is good. I'm growing wary of, uh, of your excuses. I'm growing wary of living in the countryside. Okay. So when I say I'm growing wary of living in the countryside, basically, what am I saying? I'm getting tired of living in the countryside. I'm getting less excited. I'm getting less en enthusiastic about living in the countryside. I'm growing tired of living in the countryside. I'm growing wary of living in the countryside. Okay. I don't live in the countryside, by the way, this was just an idea. So one, one important note here is don't simply write down the words. Okay. Don't simply, oh, let me just create the word, write down the words, tired, wary, yay, advanced, awesome. I did my part. I did the recommendation. I followed teacher Briggs's recommendation. No, that's not what I mean. Create examples. Go back to those examples. Connect the examples with your life. Otherwise, this exercise is pointless. Okay. I am growing wary of a few things in my life, but it's personal. I'm not going to talk about them here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going through a moment of uh, reflection, thinking, 
of the things I'm growing wary of. Oh, see, now I'm talking about myself and I'm using the words that I'm talking about. That's the idea, okay, guys? Now, moving on to tip number two. Set a weekly vocabulary and speaking speaking challenge. Guys, this was something that I did many years ago and I still do, okay? I absolutely loved it the first time I did it, okay? And uh, it was really worthwhile, you know? I, I, I strongly recommend you put this into practice. So... Every week you can challenge yourself not to use a certain word. Ah, this is good, okay? Because it'll force you to implement tip number one because you will have to find alternatives, okay? You have to find options. So what is the idea? Let's say this week I will not use very. Mm, this is a challenge, okay? Because we are so accustomed to using the word very that it's extremely easy. Ah, I didn't use very, I wanted to use extremely. It's super easy to use very because we are always uh, rather comfortable, quite comfortable with very. So your challenge is to pick a word or two or three, start with one, okay? And then you're not going to use that word. You're going to find a synonym. You're going to find something more, um, something more advanced and you can do this in writing and speaking so this is something that you need to include speaking and writing otherwise it's pointless so i'm not going to use the word but i don't practice my speaking consequently um there's no challenge okay so it's important to pay attention to that so when i was beginning my journey as a teacher as i said i was challenged to do this practice and the word the person chose was get so uh for a week we were not supposed to use get Boy, he was so challenging to me not to use get because it is so convenient. There are lots of expressions with the verb get. So I was addicted to using get. It was an amazing experience. I still do it to this day. Every time I listen to my speaking, to my listening, uh, when I listen to my English speaking practice, because I have to study just like you, I pay attention to the words I'm using the most. So I pick the words I'm using the most and then I challenge myself. Okay, so I'm going to practice my speaking again and I'm not going to use these words. I'm going to find synonyms. I'm going to find options. So ideally, guys, you should do this as a speaking practice. So this challenge is pointless if you don't connect it with English speaking or writing. But I can tell you, based on my experience, it is much more efficient if you do this as a speaking practice in combination with this um, vocabulary challenge, okay? I'm telling you, you're gonna thank me later, but remember, you gotta be consistent with this practice. I've been doing this for more than 15 years, so I'm telling you, it works, but how committed are you to your journey? And guys, this is something that I, I, I talk a lot about, okay? If you wanna master your English vocabulary, you gotta stay consistent. Now, make sure to subscribe to my channel and if you're interested, I have a study plan. I like to call it the 21 day study plan cycle because the idea of this cycle is to teach you how to organize your English study routine and 20 days to help you get ready with building a habit. So I teach you in cycles. The idea is that you repeat this and repeat this and repeat this until you know how to be efficient with the time you have and how to connect all the English skills to keep going on your journey to fluency. It's an amazing plan. Check the link in the description. I also have my listening mastery workshop where you're going to learn the best practices to help you improve your listening comprehension. But let's keep going, my friends. You can help me by sharing this lesson. Actually, that's the one thing you can do that will absolutely help me. But number three, include more writing. Now, there's a way. I'm not just, oh, but I already write. No, 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 no. It, it's got to be more intentional, okay? You, ha you have to be um, slightly more strategic with this writing because you're going to implement the previous uh, tips, okay? Synonyms, antonyms, challenge yourself not to use certain words, okay? And in addition to those tips, you're going to include this one, which is to write more, but intentionally, okay? Intentionally writing more. And in this practice, it's not just write a short paragraph. Oh, I'm going to write about my day. No, it's gotta be 
more advanced than that. You will have to step up your game, okay? So in the, ideally, you should focus on different types of essays, movie reviews, blog posts, articles, book reviews, short stories. This would be more interesting because it will require more writing. And as a result, it will require more vocabulary. You will have to check to look up more synonyms, more opposites, a, a great variety of vocabulary compared to something really short, okay? There are different kinds of writing activities. So I feel that if you want to advance your English vocabulary and, and really bring different words, more variety, you have to change the style of your writing. My favorite, is, my favorite one is movie review. Okay, because I get to describe the movie and then review the movie, describe my opinion, share my insights. And when I do the kind of practice, I write about 200, 200 is not, it's very little for me, okay, but 200 to 300 words to practice writing a, a book review, a movie review. And it's very efficient because it requires more vocabulary. And it's a place where you will get to implement tip number two, which is to eliminate a word for a week or for a couple of days, you know, challenge yourself to use something else and really search for synonyms and antonyms to bring that variety to your practice. And in combination with speaking that I recommended in tip number two, this will be a really nice practice to elevate your English vocabulary. I hope you enjoyed this tip. Well, as I said, you can start with book reviews. I, I forgot my slide. Okay. You can start with book reviews and movie reviews. I, I absolutely love them. I recommend. And something that I, I, I also recommend, you will need to read more. Writing a movie review is not that easy. Okay. And you don't need to complicate the style. Write four paragraphs, introduction, middle, and that's it. Don't complicate your writing, but you need to get inspiration. You need to bring more reading and more listening to help you have ideas to get down to business and write your book review, your movie review. These are things that I explain in my study plan cycle. But other than that, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel, get my study plan cycle. But other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye.